This is, this is, this is. Welcome to a brand new episode, everyone. Episode 525. I got a special guest coming up, Jake and the Handguns guys. They're on tour. They're in Texas right now. They thought I was in Waco. I'm not in Waco, so I'm actually going to call them. Uh, before we get to that, first, mxpeaks.com. We have new merch. We have beer koozies. I'm only telling you this because I have it to show you right here. This is not beer. This is water, people. But we've got a bunch of stuff, really cool designs, mxpeaks.com. Uh, hoodies, t-shirts, the whole nine yards. I love it. All right. Thank you for your support, always. Um, still working on new music, and hmm, something coming soon, I think. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Uh, if you want to call in the show, be part of it. Leave me a voicemail. The topic is yours to choose. It could be about music, MXPX, about whatever. It could be about you. Tell me a story. Keep it interesting. The number is 360 360- Eight three zero six 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 zero. Okay, so leave me a voicemail. Would love to have you on. All right, that's it. Uh, MXPX. Thanks for your support. Listen to the songs every day. Listen to the new album. Find a way home. Listen to all your favorite stuff. Whatever it is, just keep listening. And that and that's what we love. We love to know that people are listening to the music out there. So, and this podcast, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let me call these guys. We'll see if Jake picks up. Handguns. Yeah, baby. Hey. Hey, what up? Who's all there? Uh, I got Zach. You met Zach before he's the singer of Francis. Remember we did the Francis podcast? Yep. First time we came to Bremerton. And then we got Billy, our guitarist, and our drummer for the our touring drummer, Austin, and then we have our photographer with us. Nice. So it's me, Zach, Billy, and Austin right now. Oh. And then, like, in Corbin, we played with a fill-in. That's our friend that plays bass, and he's played in other bands with us. So Billy's a guitarist in the band. So when the other when our bassist can't be there, we'll just play as a four-piece. Dope, dope. That's yeah, cool. We're on our way out. Yeah, we're on, we're on our way out to California to do uh, to sh- uh, a show with Forever Came Calling at the Chain Reaction in Anaheim because it's their 10-year anniversary for their most important record. So they asked us to come out to it and our drummer and our bassist just wanted to fly because they've got a lot going on in their personal lives and stuff. Our bassist has two small children and they didn't want to, they, all, they did want, they did want to get in the van, but they couldn't We'll put it that way. They were both like, man, we're jealous. We want to go, but it's not, it's just not the right time. So they're flying out and doing the important show. I don't want to say the important show. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what? Listen, we're, we're musicians and we know when there's the big pop on the routing, we're like, that's the hitter. Yeah, the 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 yeah. show that kind of like covers every other show. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys are on. A t- you haven't toured in a while. Then handguns. Um, handguns is from Pennsylvania slash Baltimore a little bit, right? Like, so it's actually changed. Where are it's different now? We're from Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and Virginia. Kentucky, Kentucky. Yeah, that's where Zach is from. Kentucky, <laughs> baby. And where we live in Pennsylvania is called Pennsylvania. So when I started my record label, P A K Y, that's what it was. It's Pennsylvania, Kentucky. That's, that's just right. the state initials. Yep. And then we made up the pass along knowledge yourself as a a, a way to explain what it was. Are you and, still doing Packy? Yeah, I mean, now we call it Marco Rules Records, who's our drummer, and we just put out our own stuff. <laughs> he, uh, we, we've started our record label called Marco Rules. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And uh so yes, because that was the whole the whole essence of what Packy was was like, go start your own label and we'll help guide you. And the, the most P-A-K-Y thing you could do was to start your own label with its own name and tell me to screw off. That's what I told people all the time. Of course. Because that's what I want every band to do. Ah. I think it should be, you, I've told you this before. I know you disagree with me, but I think it should be illegal to own art that you didn't create. Right. In my opinion. Right, right. Sure. So, hey. We don't I know that there's it. musicians... Well, I know that there's musicians that aren't the greatest marketers and they, they need the help of the label to help put the music into the, into the eye of, you know, the scene. Right. But for, for, for me, I mean, we're no MXPX and we're never going to be, I'll say that. <laughs> so we don't have that. We don't have that like drive to be a huge name. Like we only ever wanted to hit in the middle. It's all we ever really wanted to be. We wanted to be the band that you thought you maybe saw them once. <laughs> but they were there. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> like they we wanted there. to be middle of the road support act. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, are are you there? Are you are you still on your way? Yeah, we we have arrived. Yes, <laughs> arrived. there's not a lot of room at the top, Mike. There's a bunch of room in the middle. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I guess just shoot for the middle, buddy. If you shoot. if you shoot for the top, you're only going to be let down. Bands, did you hear this? Did you hear this? You know, good advice. And right Mike now. already Mike already wrote all the good melodies. We just keep stealing them from him. He just hasn't noticed yet. We I think we definitely still owe you some royalties here and there. It's all you good. Caught the we all, yet. We, you know, <laughs> to be human is to imitate. I, I really feel that. And, I love and, that. And to be more human is to imitate better. Uh, <laughs> we we all kind of take what we love and we we build onto it. Like you're doing with your restaurants. You, you know, people need to know you have some of the best. Uh, I, I don't know what type of like southern food in Pennsylvania. What what do you do? So what it is is we bought uh, a a restaurant that had been in our community since 1958. It was called Stams or some iteration of the name Stams. And uh, they're basically like a chicken restaurant. They sell fried chicken, roasted chicken, uh, dinner platters with like different kinds of proteins. But when we bought it, it was about, to, it was two weeks from being closed. So with a 52 menu item, I had to, I had to dwindle it down to like six. And that's one thing that it was really hard for the community to realize, like, uh, you know, so we had this giant menu and now it's these few core items. But what I did was really focus on those items. So the chicken is, I think, better than it ever was. And what we added to the menu that the community didn't have was the smash burger trend. Everyone's doing them. They're all over the country. But there's no one in our town that's doing them. Mm -hmm. So it, like, kind of blew up. And we uh, just recently in the Carlisle uh, Sentinel, they do a uh, best of the Cumberland County, which is our county, they, they, it's like a reader's poll. They'll say, where's the best of a pizza? Where's the best burger? Where's the best hair salon? Any of that stuff. It's like the best of the county. And we won best burger in the county. And we didn't even know we were in the running. We didn't tell anyone to vote for us. They were like, hey, congratulations. You won. And we were like, what did we win? <laughs> so we nice. were just, yeah, it was nice. Because it's like, we see a lot of the restaurants will say like, vote for us, vote for us. We didn't say that once. Yeah. And we beat Red Robin. The only other burger place in the county that really sells burgers is Red Robin, and we got more votes than them. So, so did you did you like put a lot of thought into your Smash Burger, or did you just go, okay, what is what is Smash Burger doing, and then let's just do our just do, yeah, do that. yeah. I mean, yeah, honestly, because a lot of the food in that restaurant is very kind of bland and unseasoned. So I use a uh, there's a line of seasoning called Tinders. They've been around since like the 40s, and they've got some of the best flavor profiles just like in a bottle on the shelf, and that's great. I, as a chef aspect because i gotta if i'm gonna put something on the menu and it's gonna taste a certain way it's gotta keep tasting that way so right being able to grab it from the shelf and knowing that it's good quality product so the the seasoning that i use on the burger is different there's like a dehydrated butter and like a dehydrated dijon there's like a bunch of things in it that you wouldn't like if i asked you, you want mustard on your burger do you want onions you'd be like no but it's like in the seasoning so it's like it's all the flavors you would want your kid to try but they're too picky yeah so we get people all the time that'll come in and be like they'll order my burger and they'll ask for all their condiments and i always give it to them on the side because i know i go just try it first and they'll bite it and they'll go oh my god i've never had a burger i didn't need condiments for well it's because we cooked the mustard into the patty kind of like they do it in and out mm -hmm. so you put the sauce on the on the burger as it's grilling it super changes the profile the pickles kind of grill a little bit because it's like a burger sauce with the pickles in it kind of like a a Mac sauce or a Thousand Island or a in and out burger sauce. It's all the same. Ketchup, mayonnaise, pickles, mustard, seasoning. The art of burgers. Because there is an the art. The art of burgerology. There's an art to a good burger. Oh, dude, there is. And there's an art to being able to perform it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Like, I gave myself a Bible cyst. I don't know if you know what that is. No. A, a Galian cyst in my wrist. What? <laughs> they used to call it a Bible cyst. No way. So, like, yeah, because back in the day, you would the the common treatment for it was to take it and crack it with a Bible. It's like a big, it's like in your joint from smashing. I, I did the math because I have a POS system that counts. In the first three months we put them on, I smashed over forty thousand patties one by one with one hand. Mm, mm -hmm. And I gave myself like imagine taking all your weight, putting it on your wrist, and then turning it. It's yeah. not good for like your joint. You're just so going. what I did was I. I had to create an actual tool, kind of like Colonel Sanders created the pressure fryer or McDonald's made their burger presses. I had to create a, a different kind of smasher that you can't even buy. I basically had to use like a potatoes, uh, a big mashed potato smasher, 
So I have like, I, I smash them with my shoulder. Like all the, all the pressure yep. is from my arms instead of like down on my wrist. So, so you invented a, a, a smasher. Of- yeah. I haven't put it on the market yet because believe it or not, we're going to take it to a foundry. We have mm-hmm. a friend who owns a foundry and we want to make it so you can buy them because we're okay. not the only smash burger restaurant in America. And I know this, if I'm facing a problem, I'm pretty basic. And that problem is being faced by hundreds of other people in the world. Absolutely. So if I, if I create a solution to said problem, well, maybe we can make a couple bucks on the, the smasher itself. Get a patent and yeah, yep. go, go, yep. Yep. go to shark tank. Let's go. Yeah, baby. What's your, what's your, that would sh- be awesome. What's your shark tank pitch? Do you have, do you have any thought into that? <laughs> Cause this is very entrepreneurial. Uh, oh, my <laughs> shark tank, my shark tank pitch would just be going there. I'm just going there. I would, do what I just I would just do with like a, just tell your story about how you were yeah. you started nobody had smash burgers you started making smash burgers but then you realized oh my god maybe this is why my wrist is killing me yeah <laughs> my like wrist fell off into the burger <laughs> 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 just kidding folks <laughs> it doesn't Bob's burgers there's no human in the burgers yeah 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 <laughs> wait <laughs> am I missing something I've never seen Bob's burgers but what's what's well, the I guess on there? Bob's burgers on like one of the first episodes the the health inspector comes by because they're trying to find out if there's human remains in the burgers or something. Ooh, yum. So yum. how hard is, how hard is sourcing your supply chain for the restaurant? That's not really that bad. We have a local place called the restaurant depot. We get everything from there. So it's just like Meat, chicken, everything. Just like any, yep. Yep. And we buy all halal chicken. We buy the best grass fed beef that we can buy from the, from the, it's a restaurant supply store. It's just much easier to get it from, you know, one place. There are a couple other things, yeah. random items we grab from other stores just because they don't have what we need there. Have like you, our seasonings, we get all those from, from uh, Sam's Club because they don't carry them at the place that we go to. And do you, but it's cool. Like, what's that? Do you do, like, modern marketing for this, the places or do you kind of keep it old school? So all of our marketing right now has just been in our local Facebook groups. Okay. Just, and it's, you know, modern style marketing, just – Posting but just photos. I've done. I mean, TikToks and stuff too. But very, very focused. just like this is the food. This is the food we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot of restaurants that make like food related content that doesn't have to do with their menu, and it kind of draws attention to the restaurant. But where where I'm one person, the but one of the last things I want is for my restaurant to just go viral overnight because like I'm one cook, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. you don't necessarily need. You're not like it's not like not like a band because a band needs. No you could have more and more followers, more and more listeners, and it doesn't make yes. you work. I mean, you do have to work harder yes. when that happens, but, but you can let them listen to the song, like no problem. But if exactly. everybody if you wants have a hundred thousand listeners to a song, yeah. that's great. Press play. If a hundred thousand people want a burger, uh, can we get six line cooks up on you? We need, <laughs> we need a couple more grills, <laughs> some more fryers. You know what I mean? Yes. We need an assembly line. Yeah, you need you so, need to. It's not, yeah, that's, you can that's do that thing. though. I mean, you can see where. Okay, I see why companies scale because you can. Oh but, yeah, but but to become a McDonald's, you have to cu- start cutting corners. You have to start. Yeah, offer, that's offering, exactly. Changing up your your products, you know. Yep, and and the other thing we do is we host live music events in a fifty eight year old chicken shack. Like we let death metal bands and punk bands play in the lobby. On the other side, there's like a spot where we host live music. So that's we've dope. completely added everything we do and everything they do. And also Zach, the singer, of the, he's, the, he's the, so basically Taylor, the singer of handguns, this is kind of news too, and kind of an interesting thing and a way that a band would approach a member wanting to kind of step back. Our singer Taylor hit us up and he was like, I don't, <clears throat> sorry, I don't have the time, but yeah. I don't want to hold you guys back. So we're like, well, it's a sports analogy. Just because your favorite pitcher isn't on the mound, are you not going to see the Braves tonight? Right. So he's he, still in the dugout. So he's, he's still, still on the team. He's still yeah, we play told some him shows. We told, he's like he's like, I think I'm gonna quit. And, and we told him he's not allowed. Oh, you're not allowed to quit. We're like, what? You're not allowed. He's like, why? We're like, because there's no beef. It's stupid. You can't quit when there's no beef. That's dumb. So you can take as much time as you want, and Zach is gonna come and play these shows because Taylor was like when we hit him up about doing the FCC show, he was like, I really want to do it, but can Zach do it for me? <laughs> he's like, my kids are just taking up. He's really focusing on being a great father to his two beautiful children. We just posted a photo on our Instagram of his two beautiful kids. 
I yeah. wouldn't want to leave them. I was, we stopped to see, I'm crying thinking about it. I'm getting sobby because his daughter is like a, whew, she's like a little angel. Mm-hmm. And we stopped to see them. And I didn't even want to leave like the 15 minutes we spent there with them. Those are just beautiful. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I couldn't I can, imagine, yeah, I hard. couldn't imagine like you or anybody having kids and being able to leave them. It's hard. You know, it's hard. You have to, so, like, you have to be a, have a hard heart. You have to harden your heart. <laughs> he said you have to have a hard heart. You have to harden it. <laughs> harden it. Harden it. <laughs> but what's cool is, so the other side of our restaurant, at being that we have music there, the singer of the band now owns two different vinyl record stores. I'm actually going to put him out on the phone with you. It's Zach. You talked to him before with the Francis, uh, on the Francis podcast. So he is going to put, we're going to put a bunch of vinyl and skate stuff in the other side of the record store or the other side of the restaurant. So imagine like if, if Cracker Barrel was a lot more punk, way smaller and definitely cool. Yeah. 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 I like that. So it's like there's an exit through the gift shop kind of deal. Stuff to look at. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. And if you come That's in and you didn't play, a lot of people, I, I beg them, call me on the phone or play, to place your order so I can have it ready when you get here. We don't have a lot of parking. We're right on main street. And some people don't do that. They just come in. Well, that's fine. But then I have to make your food. And while I'm making your food, it's nice for you to walk around and, give me more money mm-hmm, mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> you're a businessman so, through and through so let me absolutely. hear so so let me hear you know let me hear from zach then let's, let's yeah uh, let me, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pass the phone over to zach for you he can tell you what's going on he is uh he can tell you everything about white rabbit records it's his it's his small business okay all right hey what's up man what's up zach how you doing doing pretty good how are you doing today good man um so you're singing for handguns, but you do White Rabbit Records. Is it a record store, like an actual store yeah. you go to? Oh uh, yeah, I've got. We've got uh, two locations in Kentucky. Uh, one in Corbin, Kentucky, which is like uh, southeastern Kentucky, and then one in Richmond, Kentucky, which is uh, central Kentucky. Dope, man. That's dope. Oh, yeah. And like, is it? Is it? How long have you been doing this? How and how old are you? If you don't mind asking. Oh, uh, so I'm, I'm 34, and the our first location opened up four years ago, and I got we, you know a good opportunity came up, was offered to us, and it was something I was, we were looking for. It was actually a building in that part of Kentucky, and uh, we were able to get it jumped open a little bit quicker. Like uh, so, the second location just opened up on April 29th of this year. Congrats! So you opened up Thank you so 20, much. 2020. How'd that go? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> no, no, no problems. Nothing going on. Well, it was kind of weird. All right, so it's like uh, my, one of my best friends had a record store in there at the at the time, but he also had a recording studio, and that's what he was mainly doing. And at that time, I was renting uh, the back studio, you know, just for like to my bands to practice in and stuff. And you know, like uh, I was an electrician for about fourteen years, and did electric work for about 14 years and so it, uh, yeah, whenever uh covid that did happen and everything he his wife was a doctor or is a doctor rather and she had to move to a different part of the state so they had to up and leave and uh i just said hey can you give me the landlord's number you know it's like let's see if i can rent the place but uh she required, required a storefront and i don't know her final records kind of has always been something i've always collected and been into so Stuck to what I knew, and then uh, it's like I was doing both jobs, keeping those going. And then in 2021, I had to have a knee replacement, and uh, I just quadrupled down on things at the store. So that's just uh, what I'm into doing now. A knee replacement at 30, 30, you know, mid 30s. How yeah, 30. how'd that happen, man? Was that just a just overworking? More, uh, overworking? Yeah. Yeah, from like the electrician job, you think mainly? Yeah, or? Oh, yeah, just all wow. a lot of crawling around under houses, under buildings, uh, in the attics, stuff like that. It's always got like heavy. <laughs> just, oh yeah, anything you do <laughs> is bad for you. Oh, yeah. Just don't do anything. No, I oh, exactly. Well, so really, uh, okay. The electric stuff for me was always helpful because uh, I don't know. The majority of my, I guess, all of my adult life, I've always just you know been in touring bands. Mm-hmm. So with the, that kind of construction stuff, it, it would be, uh, kind of pick up a new place. If I needed to go get work for someone else or whatever, but the company I worked for for so many years was always really cool. 
That's great. I just uh, I yeah. give them like a couple months in advance, and I'd be like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna be gone for three months." <laughs> they're like, "Well, call us when you're back." Yeah, he's a good yeah. worker, so uh, <laughs> we'll take yeah. it. especially yeah. these days. I mean, <laughs> what was that? Somebody. Three months. I said, criminals, musicians, and construction workers all have the same thing to tell the boss. Hey, buddy, in two weeks, I'm going away for three months, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back, I promise. I'll be I back. still have my job. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've always done it, so it's never been, like, weird to me to, to know people. Yeah. I know everybody I know, not everybody, but so many people I know have had that kind of life where they, they go from, you know, the road to a side job to this yeah. side job and they, they get a good side job. They want to keep it, you know, because you're just like, Hey, these, this kind of pays my bills no matter what I can leave any time. So having those kind of jobs are, are really key as a musician, oh, especially yeah. when you're aiming for the middle, as Jake says. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. You have on. a good night every night that way. That's right. That's right. Low expectations. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> right on. Well, hey, uh, White Rabbit Records, Cor- yes, sir. Corbin, Kentucky, Richmond, Kentucky. Anybody can go go swing by, say what's up. Um, I love it. I love uh, you know. There's there's real record shops here in Bremerton. There's uh, Bigfoot yeah. Records in Bremerton, Washington. We've got a record store up in Port uh, Port Orchard, next town up or down. I guess it would be down south. Um, so yeah, we you know our guitar player Tom Wisniewski and our guitar player. Uh, Chris Atkins, they both are constantly shopping in records. So if we ever were near oh, you, yeah. you know, we'd be stopping. Oh, that's definitely. For sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. Hey, and I've got a live venue in the back, too. I don't know uh, how many <laughs> strings I got. I try to pull or something, but just saying, if you ever need a spot, Mike. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Man. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, Yo, here's Jake. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Hey, buddy. What up, what up? So, how active is Handguns now? Are you guys kind of part-time as it is? Because you guys are all entrepreneurs, all business owners. Yeah. I mean, dayers. I would say part, definitely part-time, but we're trying to... We, we just want to start releasing more and doing more because we're... Our businesses are kind of at the point now where we do have people around us that can work and can help. And and we... Uh, we, we I mean, we've been working this blue-collar bust your knuckles to try and build the american dream so we just we want to have some fun again <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely. trust me cooking Jeez. burgers all day it's it, listen it's cool to be the guy people ask how how great is it doing your own business it's nice to be the guy who says if that thing needs to go i want it over there that's nice but at the end of the day i have to clean under the fryer like yeah. you're putting it over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, like so it's it's not fun like it's not owning a restaurant all day and cooking all day by myself in that restaurant is not fun all the time in in any way at all like the worst parts of it are way worse than way way worse than the worst parts of any tour i've ever been on and the worst parts of it are probably worse than the worst parts of of just being a regular employee oh man right you know yeah absolutely i'd I'd rather if you're you're an employee you just stress it, your stress isn't gone, but it's a different stress. It's a I need to pay my bills, but uh, yeah. When you're for me, it's different though when I work when I work because I'm weird. Yeah. I'm weird with who I'm weird, I'm weird with who I'll invest because I know this. I, I, I you could take everything away from me right now and leave me with just my time, and I'd still feel like I was the most valuable thing I have left. Absolutely, yeah. You've got a so pretty good perspective on that. I won't work for anybody that I don't truly love. So when I'm working for you, I'm stressing with you as the owner. Because I love you and I'm here for your business. So like I have a friend that owns a bar down the street called the North Hanover Grill and he's like my godfather in, in food. And if he ever it's funny, he's told people Jake's gonna buy this bar someday. So someday I might own a whole like a corner. It's a block, the bar's on the bottom and there's a bunch of apartments above it, he owns it all. And people are like, Really? That guy? You like should. people in the community that don't even know me, they're like, That guy? He's like, Yes, he's the one. And it's because if Chris asked me to jump down a hole with I'd be like, give me a flashlight. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's just, I'd do anything for him. And that's the only people, I, that's the reason when you asked me to work for you, I was like, no problem. You know what I mean? If Slipknot had called me, I'd have been like, no, I'm good. It was like, <laughs> I, 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 wait, I don't, not that I don't love Slipknot, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not here for that. My like, God. You know what I mean? 
you're, you're my time. It's I know what you mean. But you, you said I stress with you, and and that is yeah. so true about you because we were stressing on that on that Amberlynn tour. In oh the my god, the, me and Zach were just York. laughing about that. I was like, this is how you know because me and Zach are brothers too. This is how you know you have a brother bond when you can both look each other dead in the face and call each other dickheads. And then three minutes later, you're cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> dude, those yeah, were dude. stressful times. Oh, I got to say. Yes. Middle of a snow blizzard. Dude, if we kept going down that road, we'd have been marooned. Yeah, we'd still be there. We'd be, we'd, we'd be, we'd the be. Chances uh, are. <laughs> we'd be <laughs> Bronco or B- Bills fans by now. Yeah, we something, dude. We, we would be sharecroppers in Upper Buffalo. <laughs> we'd be cleaning all the snow off their stadium chairs. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's anyway. a, that's how they get you. That's how that's how Walmart gets you too. First, they get you in with the deals. Next thing you know, you're working for them. For those that there's probably a lot of people listening that just have no idea what our connection is. And Jake and See, I, Jake and I met um, in Warp Tour, basically Vans Warp Tour, yep. 2007, yep. eight. Those a couple of those. Yeah, and, uh, and then and then we when it was when you were on the acoustic basement you were riding on kevin's bus that's right because i met you first then but then we met again when i was working with me in airport that's right that's right so we've just kind of like yep. spent a lot of time together on the warp tour and then and then i hired you to come out for for a couple things including that amber lynn tour jake drove me we paid for parking all night he comes back a half hour early in new york city before our parking runs out and the car's gone like we have a Credit show, like terror, dude. what? Like just like we didn't do it wrong. We did it, everything right, and it still gets yeah, it still gets screwed. Yep. So yeah, yep. Uh, those experiences when you have those with somebody, yeah, I forgot you, that. You, 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 I forgot about the the car getting towed in the city. I forgot about that. That <laughs> yeah. was that was horrible. And, you, we, and we, remember when we went down there, they were like, "Well, we don't even know if it's here." And I'm like, "I see it. It's right there." <laughs> Yeah, and I and I'm like Mike. I have the other key. The, the door, the, the the gates open. If they don't give me my car, I'm going in there and getting it. And you were like, what? And I was like, I'm going to go in there and get my car if they don't give it to me. All right, <laughs> it's right there. You know what's funny? You were ready to jump in. You were like, all right, huh? yeah. You're like, if they, all right, they was, gave it to me. Let's try. <laughs> They're like, we found it. Yeah, of course you did. It's right there. Yeah, yeah it was like three hundred dollars. I had to pay them. So much money. For 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 nothing because we like I, I said know. we paid for parking the whole night. I even took photos of the the spot I was parked in and I showed the person at the thing and they were like we don't care. Yeah, and I, then I looked into an it. Eye opener. It's, pred- they, it's been going on in New York City for years and years and years. It's just predatory towing practices so the hotels can make money and the drivers can get kickbacks. Everyone's trying to make a buck. It's all that city's a hustle, man. Yeah, I mean that's that's. You know, that's the world. You can get, you can get hustled. You can get hustled walking <laughs> walking down Broadway trying to get to a bar. Some guy could hustle you on one of those table games with the ball under the cup. Yep. Yeah. Or you know, you could get your car towed. You could have. You could right. have went that way, Jake. You could have been one of those guys on the street <laughs> with the ball under the cup. Do you know how many people have told me that I am that I am the guy? I'm the rappers on Broadway just for pop punk. Mm-hmm. Like I'm that. I'm that. I'm that guy who's outside with the mixtapes. But you're not selling. You know times I've been called Rick to. You know times I've been called Rick to life. Right, you're a seller. You're like you're a you're a salesman. Yes, but, but you're not lying. You're not like a no. sleazy salesman, like a, a, a used car salesman. Let's say no. I do sell used cars though. We, we, we buy we buy and flip and trade classic automobiles because in Carlisle is the biggest car shows in the world. So if you're ever yeah. looking for an old truck or car, bro, we got we got lines. <laughs> I might serious. be. I might be. Can you ship to Bronson? <laughs> I'll drive or it Texas, to Texas or Texas. Uh, right now, I'm built, right now we're taking the body off of a, a 2007 GMC Denali, and yeah. we're putting a 1960 C10 on top of it. Nice. We I used to have a around that year Denali. Nice. Maybe it's the same one. Do you still have a vintage car, or was that just press photo stuff for the band? Um, no, no, no. I I've had a, a few different. Uh, I, right I now, no, I don't. Just press. Gotcha. Um, but Just a Honda Element, which is still one of my crowning achievements. Yes, I have a Honda yes. Element because of you. Yeah, the, 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 the person who made me want to pick up music and play guitars and be in punk bands 
drives the same vehicle that I drive because I drove him around in one and he loved it so much. Yep. You know, it's wild. You also know that that motor is the K24 motor that everybody swaps into the really fast, like, imports. That's a very common import swap. It's a good motor. You can turbo it. Yeah, yeah. It's really... Oh, my gosh. You, you could... Yeah. Blow, you could blow the tires off that thing. <laughs> you could literally go two twenty five hundred horsepower is in that's neck breaking. That's elite. That's insane. Because it's all wheel drive and everybody wants yeah, that. Yeah, man. They want that. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. I, I love the <laughs> element. But as far as classic cars yeah, I mean, go, to put a button on that, I actually just saw the guy that I sold my Skylark to. I didn't of course I wouldn't have recognized him, but he saw us. He saw me and Tom. Mm-hmm. No, it was me and my, well, my here family. Was your Skylark. But, uh, it was a '65 Skylark, and hell yeah, it ran. It runs great. Still runs great. It was just, I don't know why I got rid of it. I got, I got rid of that, and I got something else. I got a, a '53, no, fi- yeah, '53 Dodge pickup, and nice. I got it for like two nice. grand. Got it, had it restored. Is that the swept, that, that's the swept. That's the swept line, right? Uh, like yeah, on the it, side of the, it's got that line that goes down the side of the cab. And no, the bed. no, it was even before that. It was like literally. Oh, okay. Like I looked, so the fast fender ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, so yes. Had that modded out, painted flat black, rotted, you know, rat rod kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, and then I basically kind of like sold it to my friend, thinking, okay, I'm gonna buy this back someday, and like just keep it in the family. And then he sold it to somebody else. So I'm like, uh, oh man, like. <laughs> I guess technically, uh, I thought we had an understanding, but uh, you know, you, you, when you it comes down him, to you it, you got to get him to sign a rights of first refusal. We do that at car shows. Yeah, no, you're right. But uh, what he has, I mean, he has rights of first refusals. He's because he'll sell my my. He's kind of a business partner. We started flipping cars with this little tag hustle muscle, and he has uh, an actual dealership license. So, like, and he's been in the car culture and the car world since you know his early teens. That's like how he started making bread when he was young was fixing up old cars and taking them to shows and selling them to old guys and tucked in t-shirts. That's what he always says. We're going to fix this car up, sell to an old guy with a tucked in t-shirt. <laughs> That's what he likes. He likes, yeah. So he, he does front right to few, first refusals. Like he had this beautiful 52 Chevy car, two door, like light blue. I mean, fat and, and all original. I mean, whew. and he sold it to a guy and had him sign a right to first refusal. The guy still has it. He's like, I'll never sell it to anyone but you. And if I die, my kids know that it's you know you're the ones buying it. You're the one buying it from the estate. It's you. There you go. Yeah, so, I, didn't, I didn't do that. I don't know. I feel like it's all good. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Oh, and, but and, yo, you, you were asking about handguns. This is a big update good. for handguns. So recently, Pure Noise Records released and sold all their back catalog to Epitaph Records. So we got an email that said, "Welcome to the Epitaph family." You're on Epitaph now. So Amazing. all of the previous, and I'll just say this out loud, we used to publicly sort of have beef and not really like the owner of Pure Noise Records, and we used to kind of slander him. Now, not no more. The guy is as good as gold as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if it took all that pain and all that all, all that all those fights and arguments to, to end with Brett Garowitz owning all of the music I've ever put out, thank you. Um... Do you need your penis played with? Like, um, like, what do you need me to do for you now? I'm so sorry. You get it hard first, though, or I'll finish it. One or the other. Uh, yeah, you, I mean that's cool, man. Epitaph. I mean, they're they're buying up a lot of that that uh, intellectual property from. And it's uh, awesome because he sent labels. our drummer Brett. Brett sent our drummer the the most the nicest email of, like I've ever received in the music industry. It was basically like, we diligently pay our bills. We'll let you know, like when the, you know what I mean? Is it for royalty statements or whatever? Yep, like, yep. yeah. So that's great. What we Congrats. what we really want to do is put a record together and see if they want to put it out. Right. Absolutely. Honestly, you you should. Bro, we. Ooh, you want to produce? We're on a label. You want to help produce? Maybe you're the punk rock god, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Like, Listen. yeah, but you know how to write them, them, them stanky punk riffs. You know what I mean? Them, yeah. Mm, them ones that make you want to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Motorcycle punk. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like it got a different. It's it's like I don't even know how to write them riffs. I can play them, but I can't write them. Yeah, why is it motorcycle punk? I wonder. I don't know, but why does it make me want to drop into a half pipe when I know I can't skateboard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude, I love I love 
I love coming up with new shit and like how good yeah, it makes dude, you we feel. Would lo- we would, we would love to pay insane. you to produce because a lot of, uh, and this is also a funny fact too, man. The very first time we ever talked, we didn't actually meet. We met through email because we were going to come out to the Monkey Trench in 2008 at the end of that warp tour that we had hustled and recorded with you. That's right. That's right. It's I vaguely that remember that. We, that was the very first time we actually spoke was via email about recording at the, the Bremerton Trench. Right. Huh? <laughs> you guys still record there? Is that still we an do. active studio? Yeah, we still oh do. My yes. God. We should. Can we do it there? I mean, can we record at your studio? Yeah, of course. If I'm producing, of course. Let's go. Let us know what the budget is. You want you want discontinued McDonald's items? You want Ecto Cooler? You want, we, you want some want some, some clear Pepsi? I'll, I'll be, we'll be having some some discussions with Brett. We gotta let's, find rare things go. that don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, uh, dude. That's so great, man. It's exciting just to have ideas and to have like uh, a plan for the future. Um, no matter how many times those that plan or plans do end up changing. It's just exciting to have. Is, is that you trying to easily let me down? No, is that you no, trying no. to easily let me down to that later? All, not at all. <laughs> I'm just kidding, buddy. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I just He's know. like, just in case that does change. <laughs> no, I just meant like, no matter what happens, I know you meant, having buddy. ideas, having a goal, having plans is is everything. That's life. It's part of what it's part of what wakes us up in the morning. So there is one yeah. other person I really wanted to talk to. Our guitarist that's in the band his name's billy trey he's a really accomplished singer and songwriter and i want to put him on the phone so you can talk to him he's in a project called the converse kid and it's awesome it's like he's a he's from a musical family like his his uncle is one of the road managers for guar and his mother is a drummer in like the one of the, the his mother's the drummer in the biggest most successful local cover band in their scene right and his grandfather was is a music historian and been in a bunch of different soul projects. Like they're all just like virtuosos. I'm going to put him on right now. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Here, here's Billy. Billy, Hello? what's up, man? Yo, what's up, dude? It's uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Where are you from, Billy? Uh, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. It's a small town. Uh, it's a wild place. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. I've heard of it. I don't know if I've been there, but I've definitely, we used to get some mail from somebody from Pottsville, like fan mail. It's weird how things can like stick in your mind a little bit, but uh, hearing, yeah, hearing awesome. Pottsville, that's rad, dude. So musical family. Now you, you, what, how did you get hooked up with handguns and you know, sure. what kind of, so, and also are you an entrepreneur? Do you own your own business? Or are you still, still working on that? Uh, I, I, dude, I work in like fast food right now. I make people's coffee in the morning, but I do like <laughs> all good. <laughs> my um, my uncle prints shirts, so like when I started doing my own solo stuff, I was like, "Hey, can you uh, do the shirt designs for me?" And then I went over and we were like working on it together and screen printing, taking hours making tons of shirts for it. And my girlfriend Rachel actually made the logo for like all my shit. Uh, it's like a shoelace that says Converse. I'm going to get sued one day, maybe, but that could be like the greatest publicity thing that ever happens, you know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> That'd be wild. But um, how I met uh, Jake and stuff, my uncle filled in on a tour, and one night in Pittsburgh, uh, they had me come up and play Porch Light with them. She was really sick. I've been listening to handguns since I was probably like 15, 14, so... To at like 19 years old be playing in one of my favorite bands is pretty amazing, dude. That's and rad. Jake was okay. like, now like anytime they go on tour, Jake's like, you want to do it? Marco's like, you want to do it? I'm like, fuck yeah! I agree to stuff before I even know if I can do it because if I don't, then I'm probably just gonna sleep it. You know, that's how my brain works. Totally, <laughs> totally. You just do it and then figure it out. Just yeah, it. man. Yeah. That's cool. Oh yeah. Um. Converse but, Kid, though. So what's the what's the story behind Converse Kid? Dude, it's all I wear. <laughs> it's just you Converse obsessed shoes, with Converse? That's all I wear. Rad. Yeah, dude. My, my whole uh, closet's full of, like, seven different pairs. My dad and my mom, like like Jake said, my mom's a drummer of a band, and she loves punk music. She got me into, like, Green Day and shit when I was younger. Uh, I said and shit, but it's not shit. It's, a, like, crazy. <laughs> I got you. you know? <laughs> I just I got want to you. clarify. Um, 
That's but rad. Converse. Like, uh, mm. Was that? I say Converse and, and and me go way back to childhood. That's awesome. Um, before punk rock, even I was in fifth grade, and I was going to play basketball. It was my first year of basketball, like pee wee basketball. Um, Hell yeah. It was the Chico. I don't think we even had a mascot, honestly. I don't remember. It was just Chico basketball. Um, and we all had to go get shoes. So we went out, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to get some Michael Jordans, right? Like, <laughs> Or something like that. I don't know if Michael Jordans yeah. existed when I was in fifth grade. I think they did, though. Um, maybe not. Um, anyway, that's not the point. The point is, had to get basketball shoes. Everything was way too expensive. That was back in the day when Reebok pumps were a thing where you could pump the the shoelace and it pumps up the side of the shoe have you ever heard of that well i wanted something like that and all we could afford was like the 20 dollar, a 20 dollar red pair of high top converse all-stars oh my god that's, that's what I, that's what i played basketball in our, our uniforms that's were all awesome. red and that's uh so and I, I, did, I felt like kind of an outcast because I was at that point. You know, everybody had these like nice shiny basketball shoes. I had 1950s style basketball shoes. <laughs> but of course, fast forwarding to now, those were the coolest shoes on the court. You know, so yeah, no, you, you were rad before it was it was rad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I didn't know that. Like, I know MXPX. You know what I mean? Like, I played. Tony Hawk's pro skater. I've listened to punk music my whole life. You know what I mean? But I've never been like, I don't know. Like I got into it kind of early. Like I was a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was probably like eight, nine, ten. So the music that like inspired me and stuff like Bayside, Smoking Popes, which you guys are playing with them soon or did? So uh, that's we did. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few times, but we did oh, man. earlier year, this year. See, like that's those guys are my my inspiration for sure. So, like, my music's definitely that. Like, I don't know. It's really weird. I I write and record um, full band, but it's just me. So, like, I MIDI out drums. I'll hire someone to, you know, play the track, and then I go and mix it. My mixes are shit. So, if you want to produce something. <laughs> I'll yeah. probably get you something that's not, uh, <laughs> maybe money would work. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, technology but, yeah. is getting so good these days to, it's, it's getting easier and easier to make things sound better and self produce yeah. and record. You can record a whole record by yourself. It's pretty awesome. So how, oh, how yeah. far without having actually heard the project, like how far into programming the drums do you get? Oh, uh, insanely detailed. Okay. Like, uh, so, a lot of the stuff I write is kind of like it's rock. It's definitely a rip off of bass. I'm not gonna lie. That's the shit that like I listened to that inspired me. So it's like I'll go in there and I'll put like my new kicks before like a. Sna- it's really weird. Like punching in MIDI drums, it's hard to explain like without visual context because mm-hmm. of the grid and everything. And if you're not playing to a click, or if you can't play to like a, a decent uh, BPM. Like, punching a MIDI drum almost feels, like, not worth the time. Sometimes I have a hard time when doing um, original shit to, like, actually figure out the time signature or the tempo. Like, I'm weird like that. I'll just, like, start playing something, and sometimes I just punch the drums in on the, on what I think is, like, the right beat. The, the, but, like, I don't know. I, I never went too far into music theory. It's a hard thing for me to explain because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I just, I'm like, this sounds good. So you're you know what to, I mean? Yeah, like, this absolutely. sounds sick. You're just trying to figure it out and build what you hear in your head in reality. The best thing I can say, honestly, is like, for someone that's getting into it, like MIDI programming and stuff like that, just cover a song. Like, even if you don't put it out or anything, like, just cover a song, then you can get the structures down and like oh this is how like this kick pattern works or why this sounds like so good stuff like that i'm not a drummer so that's what i do right My there, recommendation. there's like multiple projects within the one project because you have to figure out well if you're writing your own song you got to write the song arrange it learn it and exactly record it and then do the video and then do the mixing and the editing it's a <laughs> long process and you're like after all that work i'm gonna get like 
three likes or something. <laughs> and not only that, but it's like, just get tired of hearing it. Sometimes I just get tired of hearing my own stuff. I'm like, if I don't put this out, I'm just going to keep working on it. Yeah. Like that's the worst thing for me is like knowing when to actually stop on something and be like, this is good enough. You know, like it's hard it being one person doing it. Like, uh, I recently got my buddy Devin to like learn how to play. I, I straight up the last, uh, show that I played cause I play a lot in PA uh, in the Pottsville area, Wilkes-Barre, um, trying to think of Gettysburg. I just played at this place called Pilgaroo Brewing. Um, I bought a cajon and said, bro, you could tap on the front of the dashboard. You can tap on this thing. You know what I mean? I bought a cajon. I let him borrow my e-kit. So my buddy's learning how to play the drums. And then when I get home, uh, we're going to start writing some more music together. You know what I mean? Like just, I just want to do it, you know? tired of waiting around for like a full band of like i'll just play guitar shit i'll put tracks on you play the drums we'll, we'll just do this shit yeah yeah i think yeah. absolutely the right way to like go at it is just go just make something don't wait even if it's not the thing it'll lead to the thing you know you can't oh, for sure. yeah it's like building a house you have to start somewhere you have to build that foundation and and just throw some nails and and all that but I like it. I like what you're doing. It sounds yeah. like you're, you know, you got some good work ethic and, and you're out on the road That's with right. these guys. And yeah, that's, man. that's cool. I, I do have to put out there though. Cause if I don't, I'll, I'll regret it. Uh, honestly, the, my mom, one of my biggest inspirations, my uncles, my family. And then, um, the, like the person that got me a lot of gigs doing like my solo stuff. Cause you know how difficult it is to just get out there. My buddy, Timmy, uh, plays in a band called Churches and Trains. Uh, he booked me a lot of my first shows, and I just I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm just giving I'm just giving like a shout out to him. My buddies in Goblin City Rap Boys, they're a ska punk band. I think you would think they're sick if you ever want to check them out. You know, go for it. They're fu- they're amazing. And uh, <laughs> uh, my one buddy Gary uh, Jerry. Oh wow, I fucked that up. Uh, in a perfect sky super cool <laughs> dude and a yellow card he just saw them i just yeah. want to put that out there because they deserve a shout out i'm gonna give the phone back to jake but it was nice to meet you man absolutely thanks billy have a yep. good one thank you sir good talking thanks mike i appreciate dude, that absolutely dude great to hear from everybody he's a, yo- he's, a, he's a youngster was that your first interview billy yeah i don't know if you yeah that was <laughs> that, that was that was actually very very good for your first he interview did good. He, he did, did very good. good he did good you really did that's his very first interview he spoke up he, he spoke clearly it was good yeah good good job bud i mean when i did i was on uh 120 minutes with matt pinfield on mtv and i i can't even watch that interview back it's not that i'm saying anything <laughs> bad or anything it's just that i'm talking so slow and so quietly just like god damn all it. right <laughs> i got a question up. and i want to know yeah what mxpx song can't you listen to going back you're just like i can't turn it off uh, i mean there's probably a few but i could i couldn't i couldn't think of a name to be honest i can't think of one dude uh, <laughs> i can't think of a single one i love them all yeah i mean even the, even the ones even when it the, sounds like you guys are little kids that's that's me i love that even the ones i regret and are cringe i kind of just i'm like eh, love them i was a little kid i love it's all good yeah exactly yeah cool uh, i i feel that way about my tattoos people ask me which one do you which one do you regret i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> what are you talking them. about all of them yeah every one of them <laughs> and i'm getting one tomorrow that i'm gonna regret too <laughs> yeah dude hell yeah i just got both the sides of my neck blasted out uh my whole my whole neck is done now all right can we can we end with a top five um absolutely we can choose between food because you're a food guy we can choose between tv shows or albums let's do that or or your, what? your choice or albums like music so you want to go albums tv shows or food yeah i was going to go choose, stand-up comedians or stand-up comedians whatever it, let's, it's your let's choice do stand-up comedians. let's let's do top five stand-up comedians of all time top five in comments. reverse order in right. reverse order. Okay. I'll go I'll go five. Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. Chris Rock. Okay. Um good. Yep. Casey Rockets. He's a new regular on the Kill Tony show. I've heard the name. Don't know exactly who that is, but I have You should look him up, dude. I've watched it's, Kill Tony. 
Few you times. have to look up Casey Rockets, dude. Okay. Because here's the thing about Ambien. Last time I took Ambien, I donated my car to 1-800-CARS-FOR-KIDS. The fucked up part, Mike, is I live in my car. <laughs> and now I have to live with all these kids. Ah! <laughs> and then he'll go in, and then he'll Jeez, start, I mean. and then he'll sing a verse from a Leonard Skinner song. Okay. I'm serious. The guy's so random. Like, it's the most random comedy ever, and I love that. So number two is David Chappelle, and then number one, The God, The Goat. Number one, hands down, turn the page. If you don't agree, you're not funny. George Carlin. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to agree. That's a, great, that's a great list, although I don't know who Casey Rockets is. But I, would I just had out. to throw somebody modern in there to let them know that I still got my ear to the street. I don't want to sound like the old fogey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the new guys are great, but they're just not quite – they're not – George Carlin, great. Yes, they George Carlin, as a as a guy who loves lyrics and poetry and the the wordsmithing. Yeah, the things he did with words, where he talks about like the the one he has about how many versions of shit. <laughs> like, yes. dude, like what he could do with words was incredible. And he went up there and he he didn't nothing was off script. Mm -hmm. Like it was, he wrote a show and he did like I don't know. I just loved it. I love everything about it. Was just so laser <laughs> you know what i mean absolutely absolutely i love it dude handguns good taste in comedy good food smart business people i don't know about that last one all right maybe That's, uh, let's not let's not get too far-fetched <laughs> people think i'm smart too so hey what you gonna do <laughs> what are you gonna uh, do? some people call me a smart feller mike others call me a fart smeller what are you now that's right all right um <laughs> You're on tour right now, but this is coming out September 9th, so this Monday. Sounds good. Um, you'll yeah, yeah. still be on tour. You'll be heading to September like New, New Mexico, or yeah, we'll be on our way to we'll be on our way to Albuquerque, Albuquerque. to play at Ren's Den. I'm playing right. at Ren's Den in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Google handguns, but where can where can people follow you guys? What's best? Uh, Instagram, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, those are the best places. There you go. You heard it. Instagram and Facebook, handguns. Um, they're on tour. The music's cool, man. I like your last album, um, the one from 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when the light burns out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one we we self we self we didn't produce it. We had our friend Corey Gable do it, and uh, but we were we were the at the helm. It was no no label, just us. I think that's our best collection of music. It's good. Yeah, musically, it it, it works. All right. Thank you. I'll, I'll let you guys get going. You're playing Austin. Thank tonight. you, brother. Have we fun. appreciate you. Wish I was Thank in Waco. You so much. I'd, I'd catch it. Me too. Where are you at? I'm in Bremerton. Uh, witness protection. The I other one. It. The other one. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. Well, thank you very much. And from the bottom of my heart, thanks for putting everybody else on, man. That, of course. It means a lot. It means a lot to us. Dude. Awesome talking to you guys. You guys, pleasure. You're the, you're, right. You always have been the big homie. <laughs> yes. All right, talk big to you. Big homie, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Cheers. All right, thanks to my guests, Handguns. There's Jake, Billy, Zach. Who else was there? Uh, Austin. I didn't talk to Austin, but uh, thanks, to everybody. They're on tour right now. They're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, if you're listening on a Monday. Um, if you're listening on a, a, a different Monday than the day it comes out, then they're probably not in Albuquerque, but check them out also check out mxpx.com we got new merch we have a bunch of stuff hoodies new designs a rolling strong t-shirt that's almost sold out so if you want that go get it mxpx.com slash shop all right uh thanks for subscribing to the podcast thanks for listening to the podcast if you listen to an episode you think your friend might like it share it with them that'd be amazing all right shout out to producer bob for editing and producing the podcast much love to y'all